Well, for thousands of escaped slaves, their road to freedom took them through Indiana. Now, so many years after slavery ended, those stories are being kept alive. News 8's multicultural reporter Katira Winfrey is here with a spotlight on Indiana's Underground Railroad. Katira. Brooke and Phil, for those who don't know what the Underground Railroad was, it was a series of safe houses, places, and people who helped slaves get to freedom. And considering Indiana's checkered past, there were quite a few people willing to go against the law and help thousands to freedom. Freedom was worth the life or death risk for thousands of escaped slaves. In the 1800s, Indiana as a whole wasn't always the most friendly place for black people. But pockets of communities literally opened their doors to bring in those looking for an escape route. Fountain City, formerly Newport, Indiana, is one of those places and home to the Levi and Catherine Coffin House. So people do get a sort of a, a personal connection knowing they're standing on the same floors where the coffin stood and some of the people that they helped stood. The theory is that the coffins built this house to accommodate the work that they knew they were going to be doing with the Underground Railroad. So you're going to see some interesting spots around this house, like this small door. The story goes that they hid 14 slaves in this small space. How they did it without getting caught, and it's really because this community decided to rally around what the coffins were trying to do. About 70 miles east, the community in Westfield, Indiana, had the same idea. So when people say, where was the Underground Railroad in town, I'm saying, you're looking at it because literally everybody in town helped out. David Highway is the Hamilton County historian. He recalls the Rhodes family incident. A family of escaped slaves owner was trying to reclaim them. Instead of handing them over, the community did something else. There was a crowd of about 150 people at what today is the intersection of 31 and 38 to prevent this from happening. There are a lot of these stories and places and the Underground Railroad Network to Freedom program in Indianapolis is doing its part in archiving them while also remembering the not so good moments. In order to live in the state you had to pay a bond to say that you were not going to be a nuisance to your county and then individuals could be stopped and say show me your free papers. It's a painful history but an important part of who's your history that must be kept alive. Now, if you want to dig a bit deeper into some of the information you just heard in this story, there are resource, resources online and books available to check out. You'll be able to find some of those links inside the story on wishtv.com. Reporting in the studio, I'm Wish TV News 8's multicultural reporter, Katira Winfrey.